Hi, I'm Chris Heiser from Internet2 in University of Pennsylvania, and this is Grouper Training, the Developers and Architects Track um, training video on integration. We'll talk about an introduction about what we mean by integration, um, and then some of the decisions that you're going to have to make when integrating your apps with Grouper. Groups versus uh, permissions, LDAP, uh, web services, SAML assertions, cache source live calls, Grouper API versus local representation, and other features. So in the um, image of Grouper components, the integration includes the application that you're integrating with, um, either the Grouper client, or SOAP or REST, or um, LDAP, SAML, um, XMPP notifications, etc. So for groups versus permissions, your application is going to have to decide if the authorization is going to be group-based or permission-based. If you're using groups, then that's a coarse-grained authorization, and the permissions that the groups or roles are based um, on are going to be uh, mapped or hard-coded. So you're going to have something that says this permission, if you're in this group or this role, then, then you have this permission. If your application is permissions based, uh, permissions in Grouper, um, then you have a little bit more flexibility because um, you don't have something that's hard coded. You can audit who has what permission centrally as opposed to trying to figure out what that means in the application, etc. So if you're using groups, then Grouper. Um, will store who is a student, faculty, or admin, and this could be loaded from a source of record. And the application will get that information of either who's in which group, or if someone's in a group as they're using the application. And then one of the screens of the application, or logic inside the application somewhere, would say something like, if the user is, uh, has the group student, then show the courses menu, or if they're a faculty, then show the reports menu, or if they're an admin, show the audit menu, etc. If you're using permissions for authorization, then you define all the permission resources in Grouper, such as the courses menu, reports menu, and audit menu, and you have some actions on those resources, in this case show, or just assign, and those permissions will go to your application and then your screen will instead of seeing if you're in a group show something it'll see if you have a certain permission to show it and then it'll show it so just a note that if you're using permissions it doesn't necessarily mean that each permission is assigned to each individual user um, you'll typically have the role-based approach where your assignments are made um, for the grouper role, and the grouper role might be loaded from a system of record. So in this case, the application might have the roles that we've been talking about, student, faculty, and admin. And these roles might have groups inside of them or assigned to them um, that are loaded from the source systems. And the roles also have the permissions assigned to them. Um, but it is also um, possible when you need it to have permissions directly assigned to users in the context of a certain role for the application. And that's when the permissions for some users are different than the permissions for other users in that role. So another decision that you need to make is LDAP versus web service versus entitlements. So if the application can talk to LDAP and the data that you need is in LDAP from Grouper, um, e.g. Um, permissions might not be in LDAP, they might only be available via the web service in Grouper. Um, or if you have a package that's LDAP enabled, then LDAP might be a good choice um, for your Grouper integration. Or you can use Grouper web services. Um, if the Grouper web services availability is less than your LDAP, um, or if uh, it's a custom application or a connector can be written for the package or the data synced somehow um, then you can use Grouper Web Services.
Um, if you do use the web services and you're using a Java application, you can take advantage of the grouper client, um, or it can also do uh, command line calls if, uh, if the performance is good enough. And the last choice here, or another choice, is SAML entitlements. Um, so with SAML entitlements when, entitlements, when a user logs in, um, you can do a SAML assertion uh, most likely to an IDP at your institution that's integrated with your grouper installation and you can get some entitlements for those users based on group memberships or permissions so if your application has you know thousands of permission assignments for a user maybe this isn't a good idea um, but for SAML enabled applications that are expecting um, authorization data there or for cloud services maybe this is a good idea so for LDAP applications um, grouper provisions uh, your institution's LDAP and the application reads from there for web service applications the application could read directly from grouper web service and for SAML entitlements grouper um, could be integrated with uh, shibboleth or whatever SAML software you're using and then the application can get entitlements from there. So another decision you need to make is if you do if you're caching the authorization data in your application versus live calls and there are a couple different ways to cache. If you are caching then applications can make fewer calls to grouper and cache the results and you could either um, refresh that cache periodically or on events so when someone logs in maybe you'll you'll contact grouper and get their most recent um, authorizations and notifications from from the grouper uh, change log can refresh the cache so that um, so that things stay in sync at real time or near real time and you can store this cache in memory or in, in the application database or on disk um, etc and there are some some trade-offs there um, and you can do multiple places you could store it on disk and in memory so that if you restart the application um, you can have your authorizations right there um, live calls the app application could just go and contact grouper whenever it needs the uh, information and you're gonna have more calls because you're not um, caching data but you don't have to write the caching logic for that. Um, also, you'll have no propagation delays. Your authorizations will be up to date. And you'll be dependent on whatever you're contacting for the uptime of your application, which could be Grouper Web Services or LDAP or, or whatever. Another decision is the Grouper API versus local representation. So if you have an application um, that's a custom application you can just use the grouper API and, and if you're storing caches locally you can just decide how you're going to do that packages um, might use um, groups or permissions in a local store uh, with no adapter and so an integration option could be that you could provision into that grouper permission store that local representation and then the package could just read from its local store like it normally would it's just that the system of record is now um, grouper and the thing that is um, provisioning could use real-time notifications as well so it's not just a batch um, sync from grouper um, it could be in real-time or near real-time also so other features that your application might take advantage of um, the light UI could could be a pop-up to manage the um, memberships or permissions for that application. You might be using external users. You might be using permission limits in Grouper. Um, you might have data in the attribute framework for whatever groups or roles or permissions you're using. You might be using a, a UI person picker from Grouper, etc. Click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of this topic. Thank you very much. For further information, 
Check out the info sheet, mailing list, wiki, downloads, etc.